Hello and welcome to this short video on painting. One thing that stands out about painting is the quality of all at onceness. All at onceness is just the fact that the whole painting is present at once. The movement that we see in the painting is both happening in and out of time. This conflict between the whole being present and the sense of movement allows us to deeply contemplate and participate with the work. Take some time to pause and look at the paintings mentioned in this video. Try to sense the movement in the painting and think about how the movement is captured in the stillness of the whole. Let's briefly review the various types of painting. First, we have tempera, or pigment bound with egg yolk, which produces images that are somewhat flat, but also intricately detailed. Two examples of this style are Cimabue's Madonna and Child from the 13th century and Giotto's Madonna Enthroned from the 14th century. Next, we have fresco, which is pigment mixed with lime water that is then applied to wet plaster. This type of paint dries quickly. One of the most famous examples is located in the Sistine Chapel ceiling, Michelangelo's Creation of Adam, painted between 1508 and 1512. Then we have oil, which is pigment mixed with linseed oil, varnish, and turpentine in various proportions to make it thicker or thinner. This type of paint is quite durable, but it can take a long time to dry depending on how thickly the paint has been applied to the canvas. As an example of oil painting, let me show you Parmigianino's Madonna with the Long Neck, painted in 1535. Watercolor is pigment mixed with a water-soluble adhesive. The paint is translucent and dries quickly. Watercolorists often use broad strokes in their paintings, but a high level of detail can also be achieved. See, for example, Turner's Great Yarmouth Harbor, Norfolk, painted in 1840. Acrylic is a plastic resin that dries quickly and looks similar to oil paint. Acrylic is one of the most popular types of painting, as in evidenced by the large number of acrylic paints available at craft stores that sell art supplies. Here is an example of the type of vivid colors that can be achieved with acrylics. Morris Lewis's Beta Lambda from 1961. Ink can also be used in painting. Ink was the dominant medium for Chinese artists, historically speaking. Hokusai's Great Wave, painted somewhere between 1830 and 1832, is an example of the detail that one can achieve using this medium. Finally, mixed media is the combination of two or more of the preceding media in the same work. One iconic example of this type of painting is Andy Warhol's Maryland Diptych from 1962, which is a combination of acrylic and silkscreen ink. The elements of painting might not be familiar to you, but they are fairly simple to grasp. They are line, color, texture, and composition. The lines in a painting can be either closed or open. Closed lines are hard and sharp, while open lines are soft and blurry. Lines can suggest movement and often guide our eyes to different parts of a painting. Pay attention to how your eyes move over the surface of a painting and see how the lines contribute to that movement. An example of closed lines might be Lichtenstein's Hopeless from 1963, and an example of open lines might be Renoir's Bather Arranging Her Hair from 1893. Color can be divided into several aspects, hue, saturation, and value. The hue is just the name of the color applied to the canvas. There are 12 main hues. The primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, the secondary colors of green, orange, and purple, and the tertiary colors, which are combinations of one primary color and one secondary color. Saturation refers to the purity, vividness, or intensity of a hue. Finally, value is how light or dark the hue is. Adding white or black gives higher or low values to each hue. One great use of color can be found in Kandinsky's Untitled Abstract Painting from 1916. Texture can be either rough or smooth, depending on the medium used. Texture can radically alter the effect of a painting. Imagine how different Van Gogh's Starry Night would be if it were smooth and flat rather than rough and raised. Last but not least, we have composition, which can be described in several ways. Balance is the equilibrium of opposing visual forces, symmetry or asymmetry. Gradation is the continuum of changes between details and regions of a painting. Movement or rhythm is how our vision is regulated by the painting. Proportion is the scaling and sizing of objects in the painting. Unity is the togetherness of the details and regions of the painting. Variety is the contrasts we can see in the details and regions of the painting. Space and shapes refer to if the painting's objects are crowded or open. Finally, perspective is the illusion of depth created by selecting a single point of convergence for all the lines in a painting. 
Representational painting deals with objects and events where all these elements are used to create a sense of the subject matter on display. Abstract painting, by contrast, is about those elements of painting themselves. So, for instance, in Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles, we see a painting that explores the qualities of line, color, texture, and shape, among other things. It is abstract because it does not represent anything other than the elements that we see. Abstract art is more immediate than representational painting because it puts the viewer in direct contact with things like color and line. Well, that's all the time we have for this short video. Thank you, and see you soon.